appreciate you being with us in Sunday school class this morning. We'll go ahead and take up our prayer request. Does anyone have a spoken request you want the class to pray about? Yes, just remember this request. Others? Brenna, just remember our, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, just continue to pray for Butch and, and Teresa. Just remember this. Yes, just remember Teresa. Um, others? Yes, just remember this. this I had a, my old radio buddy broke his leg Dan let's remember him as well others yes let's remember this others yes let's remember this unspoken request all un other unspoken requests just lift your hand let's remember all these uh member service today as well let's all pray together most kind and gracious heavenly father lord we just thank you god for another wonderful day that you've given us lord to come to assemble ourselves together to worship we thank you god for brothers and sisters in christ lord and we can share our 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 requests lord and we can hold each other up lord and and and, and pray for each other's needs father and we do we lift these up before you god each name that was mentioned Father, we just pray, Lord, that you just touch, Lord, each need, God, the healings that need to take place, Lord. Father, we, we lay them before you, God, asking that you just move and minister to these needs. And Father, be with those, Lord, that are struggling, Lord, with different situations in their life, God. We just pray that you strengthen and minister to them as well, Lord. Each unspoken request, Lord, I just pray that you just move upon each need there, God. We pray for our service today, Lord. We just ask, God, that you just... Bless each and everything that's done here today, Lord. Let us do all things, Lord, to lift you up, Lord, to bring glory and honor to you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> all right, the title of our lesson today, Transformed by Christ. Transformed by Christ. Our introduction says, The Bible identifies Christians as strangers and pilgrims. However, we should never forget that while we are true citizens in in our citizenship is in heaven, we still retain a citizenship on earth as well. While a member of two kingdoms, we are called to live by the principles of God's kingdom while existing physically for a time in the kingdom of this world. As Christians, we have experienced the new birth and been adopted in the family of God. We are not perfect and will not be until the end of the age, but between the period of regeneration and glorification, we live a life separated unto God. And that's what our lesson is about today. Uh, last week's lesson, Paul described the church and how it should work, how it should function. Many members, uh, one common goal. And now Paul digs a little bit deeper into the, into the members, zeroing in on, on, on us, I guess. Uh, a, a true experience with Christ, a born-again experience, is transforming, and that's our lesson comes from, right, transformed by Christ, and that transformation that takes place will, will produce a manner of living that lifts you up, you know, it makes, it makes you, you know, your, your values are, are higher than those of this unbelieving world, uh, 
transformed by Christ. Anybody here ever see the movies or the TV shows about transformers? I mean, I, I don't know if I've ever really watched the whole one or not, but I've seen them, you know, flipping through, and it's like uh, someone standing there, and all of a sudden they are just transformed or they're changed into something totally different. And that's kind of what Paul's talking about here. I believe, if I remember right, and maybe it was when we was in New Orleans, there was a street performer that was standing there on the corner. And he was standing there, and all of a sudden, blah, 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 and, and, and now he's a, he's a car. <laughs> and, and then blah, 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 he changes back, you know. And so, yeah, transformation. Uh, changed, uh, a definite change, right? Something that you can notice, something you see, uh, something that's real, and, uh, and that's what happens when, when we allow Christ to enter into our life. Our central truth, you go back to that, Christians should reflect Christ's tra transforming power in their lives every day. So as we get into today's lesson, let's take time to consider our, our own lifestyle, you know, how we live. Uh, is it reflecting the transforming power of Christ as, as it should? Um, you know, Jesus talked about that a little bit in, in John chapter 17. He says, I've given them that word, and the world hath hated them. Because, why? Because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. We've been changed, right? I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So transform, change. So let's get into our lesson. We're still in the book of Ephesians, <coughs> and we're finishing up chapter 4 in today's lesson. Uh, verses 17 through 19 says, this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of, Christ, of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanliness with greediness. So if you remember from last week's lesson, you know, we kind of started it out, and, and like a, a Paul writing a, a letter to just our church, right? Like, you know, he's writing to the church at Ephesus here, but he said it could just easily have been to dear Bernard Ridge Church of God because when he starts out, he says, I, Paul, beseech you or I urge you to, to walk worthy of the vocation with which you were called. And that vocation, the title is you are a Christian, so we are to walk. Uh, you know, with with the name of Christ upon us, you know, so so we have we have obligation, you know, to to live up to that, and and so he's continuing that here. Uh, so in beseeching, uh, when he says here, you know, uh, this I say therefore, and testify in the Lord. In other words, he's saying, you know, this is me writing a letter to you, but rest assured, I'm speaking the words that the Lord has given me. It's as if the Lord is, is here with me, you know, and telling me what to say. And he begins comparing the difference between old life, new life. You know, old life, new life. Get rid of the things from your old life, from the past. We can't hang on to those things uh, because, you know, uh, another in another letter Paul writes, he describes them as weights, right, that can uh, so easily bes beset us, you know, or hinder us or, or weigh us down or keep us from, from doing what, what God has called us to do. So as we look at these things that Paul's talking about, again, keep in mind, like our introduction told us, we're, we're all a work in progress, right? Nobody's perfect yet but we're, we're striving for that, aren't we? We're working towards that. And so that transforming that took place when we were first saved uh, is also a continuation. 
it's uh it's it's ongoing process and and it doesn't just you know it doesn't just happen you know we grow in grace and knowledge don't we we grow and paul says uh you you know you can't live like you used to do uh, uh, ephesians ephesus uh uh, because that society, as we know, you know, we talked about it before, it was driven by idol worship. Uh, it was, you know, all kinds of strange religions. Remember the letter I, that I read to you last week that was written uh, in like the second century A.D., a guy was writing and, and describing Christians, you know, and how they lived. And what did he say? He said uh, they don't live like, they don't live like everybody else. They they don't kill their unwanted babies. Um, they share their table. They don't share their bed. You know, and he, he starts talking about, you know, different things. You know that, well, their lifestyle is noticeably different. So there's a transformation that's taking place there, and it can be noticed. And uh, and that's what Paul is saying here. Walk not like the other Gentiles. When he's talking about other Gentiles here, he's just actually talking about those that are unsaved. And, uh, and, you know, walk not as they walk, but be different, be transformed. So where does it begin? You know, where does it begin? Well, if you look at how he describes it here, how other Gentiles walk, how do they walk? Well, they walk in the vanity of their mind. They think that they know it all. They know everything they need to know. But... They're not in the right state. In fact, they're, you know, they're walking in darkness. Uh, they're walking in darkness instead of light, having their understanding darkened, being alienated and separated from God. And so they don't realize or don't know, uh, you know, that, or they choose not to know that, uh, that they're not doing what is right. So, so you go back to, the first lesson that we had in, in this series of uh, the book of Ephesians, uh, the first chapter, how Paul described, you know, he's talking about Jew and Gentile and then talking about everybody, you know, how, they, how they're saved. Verses 16 18, cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, not the vanity of your own mind, right? And look what happens. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Enlightenment, not darkness. Uh, so, so that spirit of wisdom, that revelation that he talks about, uh, the other Gentiles, that Paul's talking about here, they, they, they are not living that way. They don't have that. Uh, and, and, and they don't have that hope that, that you and I have either. Uh, their devotion is to false gods, to, to vain philosophies, to, you know, things of this world, uh, things created by man, things created out of the vanity of a man's mind where he thinks he knows everything. And, and he goes on, he says, well, this leads to a lifestyle of sin, a habitual lifestyle of sin, the practice of sin. And, and that brings you down a road that, you know, that's, that's totally different from where the child of God is to live. And, and they're, they brings them so far down, in fact, and he goes on and describes that they, they can't even realize, you know, right from wrong. Uh, you, know, what's, you know, what's good, what's evil. Uh, so, sadly, um, you know, I think we're living in the same kind of society today, right, that, that, uh, that, that Paul was writing to uh, this church at Ephesus. Uh, it used to be easy to distinguish between right and wrong. <clears throat> even, you know, even I can think back, you know, my younger days, you know. So, you know, you think about 
you know, right and wrong, a lot of it goes back to civil law, right? You don't steal, you don't kill, you know, it's stuff like that, right? That, you know, that's, you know, it's, that's, what, that's the difference between right and wrong. But today, what has happened? Our society has become so acceptable of things that all of a sudden what what the church or what God's word says is wrong is now acceptable in society and from there it, it goes to the, where the now civil laws are you know are are backing that up and now all of a sudden you know it's not so clear between right and wrong as far as the world's view right the society accepts things that we cannot accept as, as, as children of God, as, as Christians. And, uh, and now, you know, the lifestyle of the Christian is declaring to society, well, this is wrong. You know, we, we can't accept this. This is, this is not right. You're, you're accepting sinful practices or lifestyles. You're accepting what God has declared to be sin because of the vanity of their mind because of the, and, and leads to what? The blindness of the heart and now being past feeling. They know not the difference between right and wrong. Uh, and uh, so, you know, again, the church at Ephesus was dealing with that in Paul's day and we're dealing with the same thing today. Um, so, you know, where, where does it begin? You go back. It begins in the vanity of their mind, you know, where it leads to that darkness uh, where they know not God. But remember, you know, we talked about, you know, an introduction there in John. You know, Jesus made us aware, you know, in his prayer for us, you know, you're in this world, but you're not of this world. But what else did he say? He said, I pray for you that you'll be able to stand against the evil of this world. And if Jesus has prayed for us, then we will, we are able to stand against that, against the, the evils of this world, against uh, all the things that all of a sudden seem to be okay and acceptable, but still are not according to God's word. Any Comments here before we go on. I'm sure it comes as no surprise to most of us that we act out precisely what we take in. In other words, we become what we think. And Charles Swindoll. So again, that's exactly, you know, what Paul was saying here: the vanity of the mind. You know, what's what's in your mind is what's going to. You know, that's how you're gonna that's how you're gonna act, you know, that's how you that's how you're gonna live. And that's what Paul's saying here too, and if you go to verses twenty through twenty four. But ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Okay, Paul, you told us what not to do in those previous verses. So what are we to do? And right off the bat, number one, experience Christ, learn. You've not learned those old things from Christ. Christ wouldn't have taught you that those things are okay. Uh, so, you know, he will lead us and guide us into a holy and righteous lifestyle. Um, and, and notice again how Paul uses the names here. Last week we talked about how he used uh, uh, God, you know, creator of all things, and then, and then he comes right, right along and, and says, Father. So there's that personal relationship. God is God, but he wants that personal relationship with you and I. And he does the same thing here when he says, you have not so learned Christ. When we think about Christ, we think about him glorified and think about him sitting at the right hand of the Father. But then he comes along and says, uh, 
as the truth is in Jesus, my Savior, your Savior. Again, there's that, that personal relationship. So what does Christ teach us when we experience him? Well, there will be a change. There will be a, a transformation like we talked about uh, throughout heart, mind, soul, spirit. Um, and, and that's what he talks about here. Remember, uh, you know, the other Gentiles or those that are unsaved and, and how they were guided by the, what the vanity of their own mind. But here, verse 23, for the child of God, you're renewed in the spirit of your mind. So now your conversation, your lifestyle is to be different. Uh, before, uh, driven by, you know, the, the sinful nature that we had, the, the, the lust and all of these things, blinded to the ways of God. You know, what's in it for me? That kind of attitude. Now renewed, you put on the new man. You put off the converse, the former conversation, the old man, and you put on the new man. And if you go to the book of Titus, he writes something very similar to this. He says, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, in other words, putting off the old, we should live how? Soberly, righteously, and godly. Where? In this present world is the place that we're placed. Uh, you know, this is what we're to do. Uh, so... So now, you know, salvation is given by God through his mercy, through his grace. Uh, but now we have some responsibility to keep ourselves there. And we keep ourselves there by rejecting sin, putting off that old, style, that old lifestyle uh, and, and, and putting on putting on the new man so it made me think and I played that song this morning while I don't think anybody was here but uh, the song uh, two coats right two coats uh, so uh, you know there was two coats before me uh, one ugly and tattered and torn and the other you know brand new and uh, the best thing I ever did do was to put off the old coat and put on the new, right? So, again, you know, that new coat of righteousness and holiness uh, being transformed, being changed. So, uh, and how does that happen not in our own strength? Uh, we can't do it ourselves, can we? Uh, but we have on our side Father, Son, Spirit, and it's by, by, by His strength that we can, we're not only are we transformed when we're saved, but we can continue that process uh, through, uh, through, his, through His help and, and guidance. Hebrews 8 and 10 says, For this is a covenant that I will make, with the house of Israel after those days, and we're part of that house, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall me to be a people. So, you know, how, how do we keep that transforming process going in our lives? Well, the Spirit of God, God has written his laws in our mind. So now it's not the vanity of man's mind, is it? And he's written those, his laws in our heart. And, and then we have the Holy Spirit to remind us and guide us uh, of these things, so uh, of God's ways. So we have, we have everything we need to live as God wants us to live, as, as children of God. Even in times when we're tempted, even in times when we think, I think I'll pick that old coat up and put it back on. I don't know why we'd think that, but sometimes we do, don't we? 
uh, even in times like that, the Holy Spirit will give us strength to stay the course, to continue living that righteous and holy lifestyle that, we, that we're to live. So we have everything we need as a child of God to live as we should in this world. And that's what Paul, you know, writing to the church at Ephesus here, that's, you know, he's, he's encouraging them and assuring them that, you know, there's no, there's no reason to turn back. Uh, but there's all kinds of reasons to keep going, keep pushing. Any comments here? Okay. All right, let's go on. <coughs> so again, he's comparing, you know, old and new. So we're going back now. Wherefore, putting away lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may give, have, have to give to him that needeth. All right. So, so, you know, so what does it mean to put off the old man and put on the new? So Paul gives us a picture of that here uh, as, as he's going on. Um, so speak the truth, number one, right? Don't lie. Makes sense, doesn't it? Uh, to speak the truth, especially with your neighbor, especially with, you know, brothers and sisters in Christ, speak the truth, uh, because we're many members, but we're one body, right? If I lie to you, it hurts you, it hurts me, but it also hurts the body. So it can cause, you know, distrust, it can cause all kinds of things that shouldn't be in the body, that would hurt the body. So, so you know, don't lie. Uh, be angry. Sin not. Um, don't allow your anger to govern your actions. Uh, don't allow your anger to uh, simmer and to still build up within you until it be, all of a sudden it becomes wrath and then you lash out at somebody. Uh, we can be angry at sin. We can be angry at immorality that we see. We can be angry at injustice that we see in this world. You can't, you know, and we see it, don't we? And it does kind of aggravate us, doesn't it? We can be angry at ungodly behavior. You know, uh, Jesus showed us righteous anger, didn't he? Uh, twice in the Gospels, it's recorded where uh, he saw the money changers in the temple in God's house, and they were taking advantage of the poor. Uh, there was a lot of injustice and ungodly behavior going on there, and he drove them out and, and, and got rid of them. So, you know, righteous anger. Uh, but you know, you, you can't you can't hold on to that because he does. He goes on and says, you know, let it don't let it turn into wrath. You know, don't don't hang on to that. You know, and and do something that that that, that you really shouldn't do. Don't give place to the devil. Don't you know? Don't entertain him. He's your enemy. He's not your friend. Uh, uh, when when we hold on, even like when we hold on to anger, even sometimes that's that we can give place to the devil. You know, we, we give him that foothold where he can, he can get in and 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 try to deceive us in one way or another. Uh, if you stole, don't steal no more. Uh, just you know, work for, you know, labor for your for what you what you need. Earn what you get by labor. Uh, in other words, don't go back to the to the old man, to the old lifestyle. And he goes on in verses 29 through 32. Um, I think that's it right there. Yeah. <coughs> when he says, Lo, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. 
And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. So let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Cursing, foul language. Uh, it's hard for me to be around somebody that continually and habitually uses foul language. Does that make you uncomfortable? Sure it does. And so don't, don't do it and don't entertain it. So when I looked at that, <coughs> I see corrupt communication. So I guess that's all he's talking about there, right? It's just like foul language and things like that. Can you think of anything else he may be talking about there? Oh, what'd you say? <laughs> what'd you say? Gossip? Are you kidding? Could that be what he's talking about? Could he be talking about gossip? Could he be talking about uh, snide remarks? Could he be talking about, what, slander, things like that? So if you read the rest of that sentence, yeah, I believe he could be because let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. You get a gold star, by the way. But that which is good to the use of edifying, building up, right? So, yeah, not only is he talking about, you know, cursing, foul language, I think he's also talking about any, any kind of word that is destructive, uh, what is to proceed out of the Christian's mouth, that which is good, that which edifies, that which builds up. Words have great power, don't they? Great power to build up. They also have great power to destroy. Uh, they can destroy a person's character, even if those words aren't true. So be careful what you say. And, and once those words are out there and they've done that damage, it's hard to overcome, isn't it? Um, so again, the words of the Christian uh, are to be words that edify, that build up, to, to minister grace to the heavens. Speak blessings to others. Try that out, right? Uh, so he goes on, he says, our words, our deeds should not grieve the Holy Spirit. And he goes on and, and tells us why, because whereby ye are sealed by the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. So what's he saying there? The Holy Spirit is our seal. So the presence of the Holy Spirit within you is your seal, it's your guarantee of redemption. Uh, it's like, you know, you can lay down, this is my ticket, this is my ticket to heaven, isn't it? Is that what he's saying? I believe it is, isn't it? You're, you know, the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. So, so yeah, we better not grieve him, because what will happen if we grieve the Holy Spirit? If somebody grieves you and keeps grieving you, don't you want to leave their presence? <laughs> so we don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit enough to where he, what, leaves us? Yeah. So how do we grieve the Holy Spirit? How do we grieve him? We grieve him by not listening to him and abiding by what he is you know, telling us to do. Uh, so grieve not the Holy Spirit. Um, and, and here's some other examples, I'm sure. You know, these are all things that would grieve the Holy Spirit if they come out of our mouth. Bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking. I don't think the Holy Spirit would like that. Uh, so instead, be kind to one another. Be tenderhearted, 
forgiving one another. And I always found out uh, this is a good lesson. If you ever have trouble forgiving someone, think about how God, for Christ's sake, forgave you. It makes it a lot easier to forgive somebody else when we think about that, doesn't it? Because none of us were worthy, none of us deserved forgiving, but yet, as a child of God, you, you did receive that. Treat each other as Christ treated you. Any comments here? The power of words, here it is again. Words so innocent and powerful as they are standing in a dictionary, see? But how potent for good but also for evil they become in the hands of one who knows how to put them together and combine them, Nathaniel Hawthorne. So, yeah, words can be powerful when we use them to edify and also be very destructive when we use them, uh, you know, in an evil way. Uh, Ephesians, go to chapter 5 now, verses uh, 1 and 2. So, again, he's continuing on here, encouraging us. Be therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as, as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Be followers of God, our Heavenly Father. Uh, you think about families, uh, think about children, how they sometimes imitate their parents. It's cute, isn't it? It's, it's heartwarming. Uh, makes a parent very feel very good, you know, when, when that happens, doesn't it? And uh, think about how God feels when, when he sees his children imitate him by living a Christian lifestyle. When you do that, you're, you're making, you know, you're making God feel good. In fact, you're bringing a sweet-smelling savor up to him, a sacrifice of praise, if you will, uh, just by living as, as God wants you to live. Uh, and and uh, Romans 8 and 14 tells us as many as are led by the Spirit of God, we are, we are the children of God, the sons of God. Um, so, you know, we're, we're to do that. And then he goes on, verses, uh, yeah, I missed that note, didn't I? Let's see. Let's go this way. There we go. Verses 3 through 7. So here he is, you know, here we're comparing. But fornication, all uncleanliness, covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh the saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather give, giving of thanks. For this ye know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. So verses 3 and 4, here Paul lists six prohibitions, if you will, for the, for the child of God. Fornication, uncleanliness, covetousness are three that he lists right off the bat. Uh, so, and this goes back to uh, fulfilling personal lust, that sinful nature. So it goes back to putting off what? The old man that we talked about, right? Put him off. Get rid of him. Um, get rid of those, those desires, uh, that sinful nature that, that tend to lead you if you don't deal with them. And Paul says don't even, you know, don't even let them be named. Don't even talk about them. Don't even talk about them with the saints. Um, so you know, don't entertain them. And then he talks about the other three, three more here. He talks about filthiness, foolish talking, jesting. Um, so very, you know, obscene gestures or, or sinful, uh, sinful actions, uh, uh, suggestive talk. Uh, uh, words again that are cruel and, and humiliating to people. Uh, 
and again, we talked about that, how powerful words are, things that, that we say that can, that can destroy someone or, or uh, uh, demean them. And these are things that, that we're not to do, not to do. Now, uh, now God does have a sense of humor, I think. He, he made man, didn't he? Uh, uh, he made me, you know, so. Uh, and, and it's, there's times when we can have, as Christians, we can have fun. Uh, one of my favorite verses of scripture that uh, I've told you about before is what a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, right? It's, it's good for you. Um, and it got me to thinking last Wednesday night, you know, I was telling a little story back here about what happened to somebody. And by the time I got through it, I was laughing so hard I was crying. And uh, I don't think me or, or Kevin, I don't think we've got a pill in the drugstore that would give you th that good a feeling, you know, that, that you get. Uh, from just, you know, from, from laughing and from having, just from having a, a good time, good t fun time where nobody gets hurt, right? So, uh, and so, so again, you know, put off that old man, those tendencies, and, and put on the new man. And he goes on, let's see, verses 5 through 7 here. Uh, no unclean person, no whoremonger, no covetous man, will have an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ. Um, so don't be deceived. You know, since people will say, oh, God's, God's not going to punish anybody. He's, God's too good for that. Uh, there's, there's more than one way to God. There's all kind of ways to get there. Be careful. Be careful. Uh, of these things don't be deceived by by these things let with these vain words uh, because they're, they're untrue don't be partakers of them in any way okay move on here let's see um, so last part of our lesson Ephesians 5 8 through 14 Paul is just reminding us We need to walk in the light, right? We need to walk in the light of Christ. Our lifestyle is a lifestyle of righteousness and holiness, child of God. There's, there's no other way. There's no other way to live. And, uh, and, and we don't have to live it within ourselves. We can't live it within ourselves, can we? Uh, but, but we can live it because uh, the Spirit of God lives within us, and he gives us what we need to, to live and walk in this world. And as we walk in the light, guess what? You are a light. You walk in the light, you're a light to someone else. And that's what, that's what we're here for, isn't it? So looks like our time's about gone. We appreciate your attention. This I was going to tell you one thing, though. Let me, let me, let me go back here. Uh, I was, uh, uh, there it is, verse 14. Uh, Brother Carly Riggs, uh, he was preaching one Sunday morning after I was teaching Sunday school class. He comes up to me and says, Brother, you got them fired up and ready to go? And it was one of them days where everybody was pretty quiet. You know, in fact, I may have heard a little snoring even. I don't know. And, and so Brother Riggs said, I told him, I said, I don't know, Brother Riggs. I don't know if I've got them. I may have put them to sleep for you. He says, well, Brother, I've been there. But let me give you a verse. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14. Wherefore he saith, Awake, thou that sleepest, <laughs> so, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. So he was, uh, Brother Riggs, he had, he had a verse for everything. He has a verse for everything. So we appreciate your attention this morning.
Welcome this morning. Welcome everybody that's come out. I'm glad you're here. And uh, got another beautiful fall day to worshiping and praising and lift him up this morning. And uh, we just appreciate all that came out. Good to have our visitors. Good to have Lisa with us this morning and others. And, and uh, that's what we're here for. Just lift up the name of the Lord and praise the name. Uh, I want to ask everybody to we'll stand and we'll, open. we'll have Jeff and them come up and lead us in some singing and we'll get started this morning. Good to see everybody here this morning. Let's help us sing Heaven's Jubilee. Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air, coming after you and me, joy is ours to share. What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise, headed for that jubilee under in the sky. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting on that happy morning when we all shout.
Danny needs to say something just real quick before we get started. Good morning. You guys are going to get tired of me coming up here every week, ain't you? A <laughs> um, couple things I wanted to talk about this morning. First of all, you know, the shoe boxes. If anybody, somebody had asked me they would forgot to bring their shoe boxes, you can get them to me tonight or just, you know, whatever. If you can just get them to me. Um, if you don't make it tonight, if I could get it, I, I can wait till tomorrow if I can get, if you can get with me and find out wha how we can get them. And anybody still wanting to fill one just, you know, online, we can do that for you. Just see me or Leah one after service. And another thing I wanted to talk about is Wednesday night, we are having a Thanksgiving get-together for all of the children and the youth. So the, the classes that's over, usually over here on Wednesday night will just come on over to the building, and uh, we're going to be having a little Thanksgiving feast. Only thing I ask, if you have uh, any children that will be attending, please let us know. That way we have enough food, but we don't have t so much that we have to try to 
get everybody that's left to take food home. So if just, just let me or Lori or Leah or Michaela, any of us four, if you'll let us know if you've got kids that's going to be there Wednesday night. Thank you. Speaking of food, did, did you, all y'all get some of the peanut brittle back there? Sister Maud brought, I tell you what, now, I've eat, so, eat a whole lot, but now there ain't nobody come close to Sister Maud's peanut brittle. She brought a whole big sack back there, and, and if, you, if there's any left, you better grab your bag, because it is good, and we appreciate it. Also, so somebody brought some good spice cake back there, too. Now, I, I've got a sweet tooth. I enjoy it all, and. We just appreciate you, appreciate each one of you. Uh, I'm going to take a prayer request this time, and of course continue to remember Teresa and Butch and, and Jackie. I think Jackie's getting better, but still just continue to remember him. Any requests this morning? Okay, remember this, okay. Remember these gifts. Okay. Okay, remember, yes, remember Sister Virginia. Others this morning? Yes, please remember how that she, she's been part of this church for a several years and we miss her she always came over every year and and really hold her up in prayer okay yes remember her okay any others Brother Riggs. Yes. 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 Very important request. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Any other this morning? Yes, remember him and his family, yes. Okay. Yes, continue to remember Whitney, yes. Others? Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Others this morning? Okay. Can us all stand and just really bind together on these requests? Lord, we come to you again. Lord, we're just going to bind together, Lord, in one body and one mind. Lord, we're going to join our hearts together, Lord, on behalf of these needs. Lord, these are so important needs. Lord, these people here, Lord, that would love to be in your house if they were on the eight. Lord, we just hold them up before you. Lord, you said if you just finished two or three or three, and that's what we're doing this morning. Lord, we hold them, want to hold up Teresa this morning. Lord, she is. She needs a touch, a touch that can only come from you. Lord, we pray for Brother this morning. He would love to be here. We pray for him. Pray for Jack, Lord. Get his stone. We pray for Jack, Lord. Get his Help him get well. Lord, we pray for Whitney this morning. Lord, just be with her and help her to heal. Pray for her gladly, Lord, that one that got burned. Pray for him that be so terrible. Lord, that be burned, be scarred, be blind, be that one. Pray for Brother Riggs for your blessed. Pray for his peace. Lord, we pray for salvation for our children and our grandchildren. Lord, we hold them up before we pray. Lord, we pray for rest of 
pray for Nathan as well. Pray for Sister Virginia. Lord, we ask you all these things. Jesus, precious name. Oh, Lord, we thank you for your praise. Praise your holy name. Praise God. Praise God. Take your tithes and offerings. We'll ask Brother Roger to come up and pray the blessing over the offerings. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for once again for just providing ways and means that we can be in your house just to lift up your name to worship you. And Father, that's the sole purpose that we're here this morning, to worship you in spirit and in truth. So, Father, we just pray your blessings upon this service. That Brother Eric, as he brings a message, just anoint him anew and afresh. And, Father, just uh, pray that each one of us would have an obedient heart, that we'd be open to the function of the Holy Spirit, and uh, that he would guide us, and that we would just be uh, a willing participant, a willing vessel in this service. Father, we ask now that you'd bless this offering, bless the gift and giver, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand with me all over the house. Let's put our hands together this morning. Worship the Lord. Start special singing with Sister Diane and start and then Brother Kevin. Oh, okay, Brother Kevin's gonna start now. Hope this song ministers to someone this morning. If I survey all the good things that come to me from above if I could count all the blessings from the storehouse of love I'd simply ask for the favor and beyond mortal men and I'm sure he would grant it again and again I want to stroll over heaven with you some glad day. 
when all the troubles and heartaches are truly vanished away then we'll enjoy all the beauty where all things are new i want to stroll over heaven with you so many places of beauty we long to see here below but time and treasures have kept us from making plans as you know but come the morning of rapture together we will stand anew i want to stroll over heaven with you i want to stroll over heaven with you some glad day when all the troubles and heartaches are truly vanished away then we'll enjoy all the beauty where all things are new i want to stroll over heaven with you we'll renew old acquaintance and friends we once knew then we'll meet all our loved ones and we'll meet jesus too that will be a glad reunion there'll be so much to view when i stroll over heaven with you you all help me i want to stroll over heaven with you some glad day when all the troubles and heartaches are truly vanished away then we'll enjoy all the beauty where all things are new I want to stroll over heaven with you. Then we'll enjoy all the beauty where all things are new. I want to stroll over heaven with you. Sometimes when I'm weary, Satan wars with my soul to get my mind off of the cross. Then I start fighting battles Christ has already won in a war. Satan's already lost. Oh, but if I hold fast to the foot of the cross, I'll be caught in its life, cleansing blood. And if I say, Can you 
picture Calvary and that one spotless lamb that suffered and died for my sins. His blood ran so deep that it covered my soul. And Satan, you cannot enter in. Oh, if I hold fast to the foot of the cross, I'll be caught in its life, cleansing flood. Ray Dwarf and Shindle. Uh, they done such an outstanding job and we sure appreciate our special singers. We're gonna go ahead and dismiss the kids now at this time and turn it over to Brother Eric. Let's give the Lord praise this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I feel the presence of the Lord in this place. Amen. Praise God, praise God. So good to look out and see each and every one of you in the house of God on this wonderful Sunday morning that the Lord's blessed us with. We are truly blessed to be in the house of God. Amen. Praise God. It's so good to see each and every one of you. Uh, I see that we've got some missing this morning, but we're glad that you're here in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. This is a special day for us today, uh, this past Thursday. Uh, as you uh, well know that uh, in our country we observed uh, Veterans Day and today we want to uh, honor and recognize uh, all of our ver veterans as uh, a part of the Benara Ridge Church of God. If you're a veteran this morning, will you please stand this morning? All of our veterans, please stand this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want, uh, I want all of our veterans, I want you to come to the front if you will. Uh, we got just a little gift that uh, we'd like to present to you this morning, and uh, just a little something to say thank you for your service. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Thankful for our veterans this morning. Amen. Amen. Thankful for their service. Amen. Brother uh, Jeff, if you will, help me this morning. God. 
Just a little small gift just to say thank you. Give all of our veterans another good hand. Amen. Stay with me, brothers. Somebody got a somebody got a camera this morning and take a picture of us. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The freedom we have and the liberty that we have to worship the Lord this morning is due to these men that we've just honored this morning. I'm thankful for their faithful service this morning. Amen. Praise God. Have your Bibles this morning. Stand with me for the reading of the Word of God. Let's go to Mark's Gospel, if you will. Very familiar passage of Scripture, chapter 5, starting to read with verse number 25. Mark's Gospel, chapter 5, starting to read with Verse number 25. Very familiar passage of scripture this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. When you have it, say amen. amen. Praise God. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years has suffered many things of many physicians and has been all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest a multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? He looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thou faith, has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thou plague. Hallelujah. I want us to go back to verse number 25, if you will. Verse 25. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood, 12 years. Somebody said she's got an issue. And has suffered many things of many physicians. And has spent all that she had. And was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Hallelujah. Lord, we come before you today. So thankful, God, for the power of your word. God, I'm so thankful for my brothers and sisters, God, that has gathered in your house today. So thankful for all of our veterans, God, that you have blessed us with for their faithful service. God, for the freedom and liberty of our country that we live in today. God, I pray for the next few moments, God, as I deliver your word. I pray, God, that not our will, but that your will shall be done in this house today. I pray, God, for a mighty outpouring of the Holy Ghost to fall like rain in this house today. God, and we give you glory. We give you praise and honor for what you're going to do. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Give him praise this morning as you're being seated. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to preach on a thought this morning, surviving in the press. 
surviving in the press. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you are a survivor. There are times that we allow our faith to be passive at times. That we come to the place of giving up and perhaps saying to ourselves that it just isn't going to happen, that it just isn't going to change. When faced with any opposition, many tends to just to back off or to back down. To where indifference becomes the norm. Forfeiting much of what God wants from us. And forfeiting much of what God has in store for us. But the word of God tells us this morning and lets us know that at times that we need a faith that simply gets in the press. Can somebody say amen? It's a type of faith that won't let us wait. A faith that is willing to fight for what you need. A faith that God honors, and it's a faith that, that honors God. Word of God tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. So if I'm going to please my Father, I must have faith in Him. If I expect miracles and I expect signs and, and wonders to be manifested from the hand of my Father, the word of God simply tells me that I must put my faith in God. Can somebody say amen? We notice in our text that a woman, it's a very familiar passage of scripture, that a woman had this issue for 12 years, an issue of blood for 12 solid years. But we also find her to be one that had a faith, that put her faith in the master. She had a faith with an anointing. She had a faith with, with an attitude that says, I will not be denied. She was one that have faith with a promise that said if I may touch but his clothes I shall be whole. Hallelujah. This woman with an issue of blood for 12 years she had a faith that would not quit. A faith that would not give up for 12 solid years. When she got up out of bed in the morning she got out of bed with this issue. For 12 solid years when she went to bed at night she went to bed with this issue of blood but for 12 solid years she had a type of faith that says I'm not going to quit I've come too far now to turn back hallelujah for she's made the statement if I can just touch his clothes if I can just touch the hem of his garment I know that I know that I know that I will be made whole hallelujah Hallelujah. I just, I don't know about you, but I've come with the faith this morning that will not be denied. I've come this morning with the faith that will not quit. A faith that will not surrender. For I know if I can just touch Jesus, I can receive whatever need I've got. All I've got to do is just to touch the hem of his garment. Just to get inside of the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Somebody praise the Lord in this house. Amen. Praise God. This kind of faith is a faith that has no barriers. Scripture tells us in the book of Romans that the just shall live by faith. It was said of Abraham in the book of Romans chapter 4 that he staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but he was one that was strong in faith, giving glory unto God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was also able to perform. Hallelujah. Think about Abraham that he was fully persuaded of the promises of God. I don't know about you this morning, but you're looking at a preacher. I'm fully persuaded that God is my healer. I'm fully persuaded that God is my deliverer. I'm fully persuaded that God is my Jehovah Jireh. He is my God that will provide. I am fully persuaded that he is my rock. He's my fortress. He's my strong tower. I'm fully persuaded 
persuaded that he is my lily of my valley and he's my bright and morning star. He's my God. He is my God. And I'm fully persuaded that I don't serve a dead God, but I serve a living God. And he says high and lifted up upon his throne and he lives and he reigns forevermore. Amen. Somebody give the Lord praise in this house. Whoa, glory to God. The writings of Paul, he tells us that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but rather in the power of God. For he said, we walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. I'm not living by what I see, but I'm walking in faith, knowing that God is going to perform what he has promised. From the book of Genesis unto the book of Revelation, this blessed book is full of the promises of God. Hallelujah. If God said it, it will come to pass. If God spoke to you and told you of a miracle that's coming your way. As they sung the song this morning, just hold on to God's and change in hand because the promise is on the way. I said the promise is on the way. Put your faith in the promises of the word of God. Amen. Oh, praise God. This woman was, as the scripture says, she suffered many things. Many things that she suffered. She suffered through sickness. For 12 years, she suffered this issue of blood. She was one that suffered through times of disappointments. I can hear now that every physician, Bible says she visited many physicians, and every physician offered her new hope. But at the end of the day, every physician had ended their treatment with the same words that said, we've done all that can be done. There's nothing more else that we can do. She was disappointed many times, but at the same time, she would not allow her disappointment to get between her and the master, for she continued to say, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. I'm reminded of the word of God that declares that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. Hallelujah. I may have to suffer many things. I may go through times of trials, through times of disappointments, but I've got the promise of the word of God that declares that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Hallelujah. He'll come into your place where you are, and he will pull you out of your place of affliction. He will pull you out of your trial because he is Jesus. He is a Christ. He's a king of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Somebody give him praise in this house. Oh God. She suffered many things. She suffered hopelessness. Had hit rock bottom in every area of her life. And the Bible says she continued to grow worse. Suffered many things her many physicians. Uh -huh. She was broke, busted, and disgusted. Uh -huh. And now she's in a place of hopelessness. Nobody's given her any hope. Nobody's given her any encouragement. Nobody's given her any kind of chance. But she says, if I may but touch his clothes, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. There's no other touch like the touch of the great physician. I said, there is no other touch like the touch of the great physician. She's in a place of hopelessness. She's just trying to survive in the life that she's living in. But she's got a faith. Sister Jenny, she's got a faith on the inside of her that says, that will not quit a faith that will not die and 
is the faith that says, if I may but touch his clothes. Hallelujah. If I may but touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. Hallelujah. Oh, God. What are you saying, Pastor? She's got hope. She's got hope. I know we're in a pandemic, but we still got hope. I know gas prices and inflation prices is, is shooting through the roof, but we still got hope. Hallelujah. My answer is not in the White House. It's not in the Senate. It's not in the con Congress. It's not in the House. But my answer lies in Jesus Christ. I said my answer lies in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Oh, God, it's what gives me hope in these last days. Oh, in all the midst of the many things that she suffered, she still pressed in. The Bible says when she had heard of Jesus, put that verse up there for me. When she had heard of Jesus. Now, she had, without a doubt, she had heard of a lot of other physicians. The reason she went to them, perhaps, was because she had heard of them. Have you ever been recommended to a physician? Somebody ever told you, if you go to this doctor, they can help you. Uh -huh. You go see this doctor, they'll be able to help you. They'll be able to give you the help that you need. But the Bible says when she had heard of Jesus... When she had heard of Jesus came in the press behind and touched his garment. What was it that rose up in her spirit? When she heard the master, oh glory to God. When she knew the healer was in the midst. When she knew that the one that delivered the boy, the man that had legions of devils on the inside of him, that the Lord delivered him. Hallelujah. He he was a man that lived in the graveyard. But when Jesus got done with him, he was sitting at his feet. He was clothed in his right mind and in the presence of the master. When she had heard of the one that rebuked the wind of the storm and spoke unto the sea and said, Peace be still. And there was a great calm upon the sea. When she had heard of the one that took a last lunch and he Fifth thousands with two fish and five loaves of bread. She knew this is my healer. This is my deliverer. This is a great physician. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. He is a Christ and he's a king of glory. Hallelujah. Oh, God. You see, pressing in. It's a spiritual matter. It means I'm going to get right in the middle of things. I'm not going to ignore it anymore. I'm not going to close my eyes to it anymore. But I'm going to press in with the supernatural faith in a supernatural God. I'm going to get in the press because I know that I know of what he can do. There's nothing that he cannot do. He can still open the blinded eyes. He can still heal cancer. He can still bring people out of the wheelchair and cause the lame and the crippled to walk. There is absolutely nothing that my God cannot do. He is a God of the impossibility in the impossibles. Man may say it's impossible, but the word of God declares me unto me that God says with me it is possible. It doesn't matter what you're facing. It doesn't matter the place that you're in today my God can do it my God can fix it my God can turn it around he's still the healer he's still the deliverer and he's still God amen oh God but 
you got to get a you got to get a mentality that says I'm going to get right in the middle of my mess and I'm going to press my way through now pressing in is not always easy before COVID it's like going to the Fayette Mall at Christmas time trying to do some Christmas shopping uh-huh. or going to Walmart on a Friday night or a Saturday night uh, and just touching shoulder to shoulder the multitude of the people everybody seems to be wanting the same thing any of you folks ever go shopping on Black Friday? I was in E-Town, Christie Shops, and with my mom on Black Friday. And me and my dad thought we would go out for a while. And this is before COVID. Went to Walmart and seen flying objects in the air. Everybody wanted a TV, and they all wanted the same one, Brother Jeff. Every single one of them wanted the same one. So there's a fight breaks out. TV's flying everywhere. But what amazed me was is that they was willing to fight for that TV. I don't know how much it was, $100 or $50, I don't know. But they, everyone wanted the TV and was willing to fight for it. I'm blessing God. Get a fight on the inside of you. Get a spirit of fight about you. And fight for your kids. Fight for your spouse. Fight for your ministry. Fight for the church. Fight for your family. Amen. Praise God. Fight for it. Get in the press and fight for it. She was willing. I'm going to fight for my health. I'm going to fight for my life. The enemy wants to destroy your life. He wants to kill you spiritually. Fight for your life in God. She gets in the press. She's pressing her way through. Now... In this time, when you were sick and had the issue like she had, you was considered unclean, meaning you was considered an outcast. Nobody wanted anything to do with you. Nobody wanted to be around you. Uh -uh. So she's oppressing her way through. Where's she going? Just trying to get to the master. Just pressing her way in. Everybody else is there for their own self. But she says, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. I've got to fight for my health. I've got to fight for my life. I've got to fight for what is mine. I know the devil is trying to destroy. I know the enemy is trying to kill. But oh, if God be for me, who in the world can be against me? I've got a fight for my relationship in God. Amen. If you don't fight for yourself, nobody else is going to. I can preach to you Sunday in and Sunday out. But you gotta, you gotta have a desire for yourself. I want to change. You've got to have a desire in your heart that says, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of being in the same old routine, in the same old place. I know God's got greater for me. I know God has got great things in store for me. I'm going to fight for what God has got in store. I'm going to fight for the plan of God that God has for my life. Amen. Oh, God. Gotta have a fight about you. Now, she responded to what she'd heard when she had heard that Jesus came in the press behind. She started pressing in. 
mentality that says, I'm going to survive the press. Too many folks today is dying in the press. They're in the press, but they're losing faith, and they're losing hope, and they're dying right in the middle of the press. But she had an attitude. I'm going to survive the press. I'm going to touch him. I don't have to see him. I just got to touch his clothes. I don't even have to touch his skin. All I need to do is just touch his clothes. And I know that I shall be made whole. If I can just touch his clothes. Now, now think about this. If we would give, if we would give the same faith unto Jesus that we give to our doctors, imagine what the Lord could do. Doctor, it amazes me with some that they can give five or six prescriptions and line them up. And it looks like a little mini pharmacy in our home. And we'll take every single one of them. Now, the doc, God's get the doctor's wisdom. I'm not saying that. But we put great faith in doctors. If he tells you, you take 10 pills a day, some, what are they going to do? They're going to take 10 pills a day. Now, if you do, I'm not saying not to. I'm just listening at me. We put great faith in doctors because we believe what they're doing is going to help us. What about putting great faith in the master? In the great physician who took the stripes upon his back and said, By my stripes ye are healed. Oh, glory to God. How about the one that all he's got to do is just speak his word. Hallelujah. The Bible says as the lepers walked, they were cleansed. Hallelujah. He's got the power to heal. He's got the power to deliver. In just an instant moment, you can be healed by the power of God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'm not knocking medicine, so don't take that and run with it. I'm not. But we put faith in doctors. It says, you take this and you do this. If you'll run, if you'll run 10 miles a day when you've never run a day in your life. But the doctor tells you, if you'll run 10 miles a day, you'll be healed. Guess what we'll be doing? I see you running by the parsonage, running down the road. Hey, man, don't look at me like that. We put faith in doctors, and that's fine. But what about the great physician? What about the great physician? I bless the God that opened blinded eyes, caused the lame and the crippled to walk, healed the leprosy, healed the man sick of the palsy that was born of four. He came through the roof but walked out the front door when the master got done. He's still the great physician. Put your faith in the healing touch of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. Somebody give him praise in this house. Amen. Now, she's pressing in. What are you doing? Come up here, Brother Trent. What are you doing? Somebody said, What are you here for? I'm here to get my healing. Go over there. What are you pressing in for? Doctor said you was dying. Doctor said you didn't have no hope. What are you pressing in for? I'm pressing in to get my healing. 
You've been to many physicians. You've been to every doctor in this town. What are you doing in this place? What are you doing in this press? I'm here to get my healing because I know if I can just touch his clothes, all I got to do is just touch his clothes and I know that I shall be made whole if I just touch his clothes. Oh, they looked at her. Well, you've lost your mind. No, I've heard about his work. I've heard about his power. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing of the word of God. Hallelujah. And the word was made in flesh and dwell among them. Over there stands the word. And all I got to do is just touch the power of his word. All I got to do is just touch the word. If I may but just reach out and touch his clothes, I know that I shall be made Oh, he's tired. He's weak. Listen. Look at you. You barely can't move. You're so tired. Look at you. Barely can't move because you ain't got no strength. That's okay. I'm going to keep pressing in. I'm going to survive the press. I'm going to be a survivor. I will not die with this issue. I refuse to die with this issue. I'm not going to die in this condition that I'm in because the healer is in the midst. The deliverer is in the midst. And if I can just touch his clothes, I know that I'll be made whole. Power of life and death is in the tongue. Speak life over yourself. God. I said, speak life over yourself. Hallelujah. I shall not die, but I shall live. I shall not die, but I shall live. I shall not die, but I shall live by the power of God. I'm going to live. Oh, God. So press it in. Close enough. Just close enough to reach out and touch his clothes. And Brother Roger, as soon as she touched his clothes, the Bible says, and straightway, straightway, the fountain of her blood dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed and made whole of that plague. There's no other touch like the touch of the great physician, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Oh, God. No other touch. Look at this. Just one touch. Just one touch. She didn't have to grab a hold of his clothes. So I'm in healing. She just, Brother Roger, touched his clothes. Just touched his clothes and immediately she was changed. All it takes to change your circumstances is just one touch of the master. All it takes to change your marriage from a nightmare into a dream is just one touch. All it takes to turn an alcoholic into a church of God Pentecostal preacher is just one touch of the power of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. Just one touch. 
That's all it takes. She didn't thought about this. Soon, I believe, has her fingertips. I don't believe, even believe, Brother Jeff, she had to put her whole hand on his clothes. Just her fingertips. And she was instantly changed. That's the power of the master. That's the power of the great physician. Doctor says, there's nothing more we can do. We're at the end of our road. But Jesus says, now you've come to the place where I can touch you. Now you've come to the place where I can change and, re re and reveal and show you my glory and my healing power. Amen. Oh, God. Touched his clothes. She knew that she was healed of that plague. And he, the master, Sister Case, even felt the virtue. And knew somebody, Brother Riggs, somebody has touched me. Somebody has touched me. Somebody has touched me. Oh, and she got up. Come down here, Rhoda. She got up. What do you think her response? I'm getting ready to close. What do you think her response was? She got up. Do you think she just, just stayed on the floor? I think she stood up on her feet. However, I think she rejoiced. I think she rejoiced. Maybe, I don't know, maybe she went running down the street saying, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. Every doctor in town said I was a dying woman, but look at me now. I've been healed, I've been healed, I've been healed. I shall not die, but I shall live. Amen. She rejoiced. She rejoiced. I believe she rejoiced. I don't think anybody had to tell her. You know, you need to praise God. You need to rejoice. Hey, man, you need to praise God, bro. Put a smile on your face. I don't think anybody had to tell her that. I believe he can. I believe there was a spirit rejoicing in her. There was a running over. I'm healed. I'm healed. Everybody else done give up on me. Family done give up on me a long time ago. Doctors done give up on me, but look at me now. I'm healed. Hallelujah. I knew if I could just touch his clothes. I didn't even have to touch his body. I knew if I could just touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. Look at me now. I've been healed by the master. I've been touched by the master. All it takes is just one touch of the hand of the master. Amen. Oh, God. She was excited. Remember the, remember the day that the Lord saved you? Remember the day the Lord touched you? Changed your life. Changed your circumstance. You should live every day as if it's the day that the Lord saved us. Heart rejoicing that says, I've been healed, I've been healed, I've been delivered by the hand of the Master. Mm. Thank you, Brother Trent. Surviving in the press. Go to that next verse, verse 28. She said, I may but touch his clothes. Verse 29, I shall be made straightway the fountain. Blood was dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed. Gone. 
I don't know what you're in need of here today. But I come to tell you, you can be a survivor in the press. Don't you die in the press. Don't you give up in the press. Don't become a victim in the press. Remember your identity. You're a child of the king. Oh, glory to God. You're a child of the king. Hallelujah. And my father has never lost a battle. I said, my father has never lost a battle. And the battles that you're fighting today, they don't belong to you, but they belong unto the Lord. David said, the battle is not mine, but it belongs unto the Lord. Amen. I'm not a victim, but I'm a victor in Christ Jesus. Surviving in the press. I want you to stand with me all over the house. I want the musicians to come. I want them all to come. Surviving in the press. The Bible tells us in the last days there will be a great falling away. Brother Jeff, I see people today dying in the press. Losing hope. Losing courage to fight. Don't lose the courage to fight. The Lord is still with you. You have a made up mind that says, I'm going to be, I'm going to survive in the press. I'm going to survive in the press. Fighting for my life, but I'm a survivor. <laughs> I got to I got to go to the University of Louisville tomorrow. To see you. The head, the cardiologist and the heart valve department there in the, in the hospital. Never met this man a day in my life. But they say I need to see him. I feel fine. Somebody asked me that day, how you feel, preacher? I feel good. Just amazed. A lady called me the other day and confirmed an appointment to, to see this doctor tomorrow evening at 4 o'clock. She said, Are you having any symptoms? I said, No, ma'am. No symptoms at all? I said, None at all, ma'am. She said, That's just amazing. I got a big God. I got a great God. I'm surviving the press. I shall live and not die. I'm a survivor. The enemy will come to you. Listen to me. He'll come to you and whisper in your ear. Tell you you can't make it. He'll tell you ain't nothing going to change. What's the use of fighting? The devil is a liar and the father of them. I said the devil is a liar and the father of them. I bless it. God put the enemy in his place. Remind him, hey, devil, let me tell you who I am. I'm a child of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. I'm covered by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. And victory today is mine. Hallelujah. I don't walk in defeat, but I walk in the victory and the power of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I don't know what he's going to say. I feel good, feel great, I really do. I, I know one thing, whatever he says, I've got the great physician on my side. Oh, glory. All it takes, just one touch on this heart valve of mine. And it will be restored whole as it was the day that I was born. Hallelujah. Just one touch of the master. That's all it takes. It's just one touch to change your situation, to change your circumstance. I want every head bowed and every eye closed in this house. I don't know what you're going through this morning. Don't know where you are with God. 
But if you're here today and you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior, I would not dare leave this house lost and not knowing Jesus as my Savior. I would not dare leave this house if you came in lost. I would not dare leave this house walking out lost. But I leave here changed. By the power of God, I leave here a joy in my soul and a peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Knowing Jesus as my Lord and Savior. If you're here and that's you with every head bowed and every eye closed to say, Pastor, I don't know the Lord as my personal Savior. I need the Lord today. If you're here and that's you, will you signify by the raise of hand? Just slip it up and put it right back down. That's all I ask. Would there be one in this house? Would there be one in this house? What about it? Would there be one in this house? Holy Ghost, I feel the Lord in this place. I tell you, I feel the Lord in this house. Would there be one in this house? To say, I'm not where I need to be with God. I don't want to leave here the same way I came. Would there be one? Spirit of God touching this house. If you're here today, there would be none. And if you're here and you say, Pastor, I'm going through a storm. I'm going through some trials right now. I need a touch of the Master. I need to reach out and touch the Lord. If you're here today and that's you, I want you to come from where you're standing. I'm going to lay hands on you. We're going to pray for you this morning. Would there be one in this house? Come on. In the name of Jesus, I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. Come on, come on. You say, I need to reach out and touch the Lord. I need the touch of the great physician upon me this morning. Come on, that's it. They're coming. Come on. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost. Would there be anyone else? Come on. Come on. You need a healing. You need to run to this altar. You need a touch of God. You need to run to this altar. Come on. Come on. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Spirit of God, I want my in-house ministers. I want you to come. Get the anointing oil. Help me. Get ready to pray this morning. Come on. Come on. In the name of Jesus. Spirit of God. Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Spirit of God. Mighty God. I want some Holy Ghost field preachers I got in this house. My Holy Ghost field leaders I've got in this house. I want you to come. Get around these this morning. Hallelujah. I want you to help us pray. Believe in God. He's going to touch. God's going to heal. God's going to deliver. In the name of Jesus. Stretch your hands towards this direction. Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus.
Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Spirit of God, touch my sister. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, God, Lord, move upon my sister, in the name of Jesus. Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, touch Sister Lori this morning. In the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Sister Virginia, right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, touch my sister. He or her body. In the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, God. Move God for my brother. God, just touch my brother. Lord, in a special way. God, I pray, God, you anoint him with fresh oil. With fresh oil, God. Let fresh oil ring. Holy Ghost. together. Let's worship him this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God.
name of Jesus, Spirit of God. Brother Nathan, yeah, Brother Nathan, come down here, I want to pray for you. Come here, come here, Brother Jim. Come here, brothers. Come down here, Brother Nathan. I want us to pray for Brother Nathan this morning. He's been battling pain all week long. This week, at times, been just barely able to walk. I believe the Lord, I believe the Lord is able to heal my brother. I believe the healer is walking in his house this morning. I want you to stretch your hands towards this direction as they continue to play and sing. I want you to believe God with us. God heal Brother Nathan this morning. In the name of Jesus. Lord, move God. You see the desires of his heart. God grant him today in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God. you to lift your hands with me all over this sanctuary. I just want us to give the Lord a good wave offering of praise right now. Spirit of God, hallelujah, hallelujah, the healers in this place, the deliverers in this house, hallelujah. Whatever needs you've got this morning, all you need to do is just reach out and touch the Lord. He's passing by your way this morning. Just reach out and touch the Lord. Spirit of God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, God. Touch him, Lord. Hallelujah, Spirit of God. Thank you, Jesus. Sister, Sister Jenny, you know that song, You Won't Leave Here Like You Came, and she sang that for me. You won't leave here. Like you came in Jesus' name. Oh, God, touch the Lord. Bound the Depressed, breath, tormented, sick or lame. For the Holy oh, yes, Ghost God. Thank you, Jesus. Back, Hallelujah. Still the oh, same. Yes, Spirit of God. Oh, mighty God. Like you Come here, Christian. Yes, God, thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Yes, God. Lay your hand on Sister Jenny right now. She'll be all right. Hallelujah. Come on, saints of God. Pray with us this morning. Stretch your hands towards this direction and pray with us. Oh.
Won't you stand with me this morning? Let's sing this chorus together. Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing it together. In the name of Jesus. Oppressed, tormented, sick for me. Jesus, in the name of 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 Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord. you won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. He may be bound, oppressed, tormented, sick or Let's put our hands together this morning. Give the Lord great praise. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm going to survive the press. I'm going to survive the press. I'm a survivor in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. We love you and thank the Lord for each and every one of you. Ladies, please don't forget this evening is the ladies meeting at 530 in the overflow Christy will be meeting with you today at 530. So, ladies, please don't forget this important meeting. Amen. She's excited to meet with you, ladies, for the first time. And uh, I know God's got great things in store for you and great plans. Amen. Praise God. Shoe boxes, don't forget those. And peanut brittle. Amen. They tell me it's the best in the land. It's out in the foyer. There's some, uh, there's some pumpkin bread out in the foyer. Amen. Praise God. Whatever you're looking for, it's out in that foyer. Amen. Praise God. But uh, we're thankful for each and every one of you. Please don't forget service tonight at 6.30. Make every effort you can to come back and be with us tonight. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Brother, amen. Brother Joe, dismiss us in a word of prayer.